Ah, hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic, and this week I'm joined by some very special guests. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? I am Robert Cowan, Team DSM Robotics and YouTube channel Robert Cowan DIY. I'm David Small with Team Small Robots, and you can find me also on YouTube with Team Small Robots. Phil Costanza with Team Cerberus and Team Cerberus Robotics on YouTube. So uh, we're here kind of basically at the end of AVC, but we're kind of we're going to talk a little bit about how we prepped for AVC. We've all got fight videos that will come out uh, later in the week, maybe later in the month, depending on our uh, editing schedules. I mean, I'm all the way over in the States right now, so editing is going to be a little bit of a difficult one for me. Um, yeah, so obviously three of us flew with robots and one of us didn't fly with robots, so we had a a bit of a different time bringing robots here. Obviously, I came all the way from Australia. Uh, my robots didn't take too much damage until they were shipped internally. Uh, so they were kind of pulled out and put back in really badly and took a little bit of damage. Uh, especially with Annie, are you okay? My beta weight, it kind of lost a few things. And I owe Phil a lot for this one because he borrowed, he lent me batteries and motors and things. And back up. You guys, yeah. You guys have any issues with shipping? Southwest scratched up my weapon bar, but that was about the worst. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, not ruining the paint job. <laughs> the last minute paint job. Yeah. <laughs> Mine shipped just fine. Yeah, well, you drove down the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm 15 minutes away, so yeah, it's easy. Ten, ten minutes by car is pretty easy to do. So yeah. well, it's 15 traffic, 20. Oh, oh, yeah. hardships. Real, real <laughs> hardships right there. Well, thankfully, this was on a weekend, so yeah. traffic was late. Nice. Yeah, I also flew by Southwest, but I guess they liked me more than you and <laughs> didn't try to ruin anything. So did you guys do any special prep for ABC or just rebuild robots that you've done before? Add anything different to robots? Uh, I didn't touch Demon Spawn at all. Between uh, wherever the hell I was last and now, I can't remember what event was last, but uh, Hellhound was all new, and that was scrambling to get that done, and to prep for uh, Robot Battles at Dragon Con, which was the previous weekend. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a lot of fighting. <laughs> it is. But I'm scared to go back to the real world. I probably have 800 emails in my inbox. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Let's see. I had, I had Highlander, my antler clipper, done um, actually early, like three days before the event. Um, but then my Beetleweight Flamethrower Doom Forge wasn't done until about two hours before the event started here. Um, it came in a box of parts and then was assembled. And kind of worked. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, that's it. We'll just see how all of this stuff went. And yeah, obviously I built very, very obvious uh, before coming here that I had to ship it and it got shipped in many different pieces because I wasn't prepared to risk damaging it when it needed to be fighting here and then also later in the month uh, and I shipped my beta weight just in a box in pieces and that took the most damage. So, note to self, next time don't ship beta weights in parts in a box. It's not a good idea. <laughs> good job. Yeah. What about you? Oh, I, I had a lot of prep. Um, I spent way too much time prototyping the chassis for my 30 pounds uh, featherweight crippling compression. And unfortunately, spending all that time building that, I end up not getting my beetle weight ready, but. Hopefully, once you open up registration for your event, I'm going to have that beetle ready and looking at one third of the kinetic energy of what Ripple Depression deals out for beetle. Okay, wow. so I might have to reinforce that arena. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, I, I've, I've actually been prepping, doing um, a lot of the math. I have a uh, spin up calculator spreadsheet where I can um, look at, you know, current draw, I can look at all the kinetic energy, and I can kind of go, um, it's millisecond by millisecond, I can actually see what the power curves look like. And Very oh, fancy. So I've been doing a lot of math on. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out the best way to deliver that amount of power in Beetle Way. Um, I've smoked wires, I've blown up batteries, um, so just trying to trying to get 80 amps into a Beetle is interesting. So, yeah, wow, we'll see how that goes. My feather weapon draws 80 amps, but only at startup. Like it draws 80 amps at startup and then it tapers back off again really yeah. quick. Yes, about 5560 is the highest I've seen on startup on my Beetle. Oh, damn. That's... It's fun. Yeah, that's, that's going to be impressive. I'm looking forward to seeing whatever fights happen out of that. <laughs> so when's the next event? Like, when's that one coming out for uh, Arizona? 
Yeah. Uh, so Arizona um, has a club that I run called Arizona Robotic Combat Arc. Not to be confused with uh, Adelaide Robotic Combat. Yeah. Which is also <laughs> Arc. They're totally opposite sides of the planet, so that's, they're okay yeah. to have the same name. Yeah, but, uh, trademark dispute. <laughs> <laughs> so November 10th in Chandler, Arizona, we're gonna have a little 150 gram all the way to three pound um, event. To be a good time until somebody blows your brain. <laughs> <kills> <laughs> your brain. <laughs> We'll see. But no, we, we take precautions for these sort of things. So, Phil, you've just come off a lot of events, right? Yeah, a little bit. Do you, do you have any events coming up, or are you um, got a, you've got a, a couple of months clean now? Maker Fair Orlando is early November. Okay. I think that's the next one I'm prepping for. Um, yeah. That's, it's, what's well, all at Maker Fair? It's, uh, well, there's a robot battle session. They do uh, up to 30 pounds full combat, and they do uh, two... 50s uh, sportsman. So I think some not commercially licensed version of Kraken might be there. And, uh, usually Andrea will bring their bots. Oh, no, they did full um, combat 30s. Yeah. I don't think we've ever had enough robots to do real matches, but it uh, looks like if people show up that are signing up, they might have it. Get some duct tape ready. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, that's uh, that's a little bit almost a spoiler there for what's coming up out of your channel. Uh, but yeah, there was a lot of duct tape used over this weekend. I think I, get, I think I'm safe to say that. But yeah. that's most uh, most combat stuff happening. And gorilla tape. And yes, yeah. lots of gorilla tape. It happened to notice my role is missing. <laughs> <laughs> well, singer was oh, used I, yours? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or I lost it, which is very possible. It was on yeah. my table. So. That's because I brought it. Really? Yeah. I wonder if we can. Okay. Oh, maybe maybe you keep it as a thank you for holding on to my butane. <laughs> okay. so. I guess, yeah. So yeah I charge you rent on the butane. Yeah. 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 Well, it's kind of hard to fly with the butane, right? That's, yeah, that's right. That's why yeah. I gave it to me. It's another preparation. I can't bring uh, butane for my fire robots, so I bug the locals to pick me some. Yeah. Well, that's, that's one of the... The problem with having a fire based robot is Yeah, but one yeah. plus size is that you have a fire based robot. Yeah, that's, this is very true. The crowds do love fire based robots. That's one of those things I wish we could do in Australia, but we just, like, nowhere in Australia is set up for it. And Australian laws around, like, fire safety and things are very, very tight. So, these <laughs> species. Well, I mean, you could try, but I think you'd be shut down pretty quickly. You put the robot in the arena and you start the flame up and you'd be declared the loser of the fight. So, you know, yeah, it's, uh, it's a little hard on that one. <laughs> oh, you, you, you were saying that you do a uh, wood floors, Jack? Yeah, yeah. So, basically, all of the arenas in Australia have wooden floors. Uh, not that there are many arenas in Australia. ARC has two. There's... One and wait, one in Brisbane, one in Melbourne, and then there are two featherweight arenas, and that's it. Gotcha. Yeah, and one of the featherweight arenas is just like sitting in somebody's shed somewhere, collecting <laughs> dust, and the one arena gets travelled up and down the east coast when we do events. So, yeah, it's we get like one featherweight fight a year. So you guys are talking about like, oh my god, this event with featherweight fights, and this event with featherweight fights, and I'm like, oh. Plus your overall impression for ABC. Oh, ABC is incredible. Like this first time in a US competition. Yes, yeah, first time in a US competition, and it was a bit of a step up. And it was also interesting to see the differences in American bots versus Australian bots. So you guys have a lot of like finger tech stuff, and you know you have a lot of really good suppliers for electronics and gearboxes and all this kind of stuff. Whereas in Australia, we have Hotbits, uh, which is Steve who runs most of the Australian competitions, and we have China. So all of our electronics are either Hotbits electronics or they're cheap Chinese knockoff things from, you know, some reseller somewhere. Sounds like so, you need to sell it. Yeah, yeah, we really, it would be good. The problem is, like, our, our community is really small, so I know everybody who will build a 30-pound robot in Australia. This year. Like, it's just... That, you know, and I can count them on two hands almost. Like it's yeah. So there's there's not enough people to import yet. We're growing slowly. We'll, we'll, we'll get there eventually. I it looks hope. like we'll have to go to Australia. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Oh, look, if any of you guys are keen, you know, end of the month, <laughs> I'd have to build a feather. <laughs>
Yeah, you have to build a feather. It's I have a slightly used one. Yeah, a slightly used one. Yeah. yeah, it's got the screws. Yeah, a couple of screws, bit of duct tape. You'd be good to go. I have a question for you, feather builders. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious if it's a bigger robot, but I'm wondering if the best way to transport said robot to an event within the country would be to either ship it or take it with me on the plane and take the hit from the uh, you know heavy baggage fees. Or if there's any other weird stuff I have to deal with, which route would be the best? Well, okay. Well, I mean, I can I can only really speak for taking robots. Well, I can speak for it inside Australia. Um, and then traveling internationally. So I, when I fly with robots, I typically fly the slightly more expensive airline at home, and that gives me free baggage and just a little bit more safety and security, essentially, around the bag. I kind of trust them more to take the bag and not really mess with it too much. Okay. Um, and really good packing is the, the key, I think. I Typically, when I fly a robot, I take the drive motors out, I take the weapon off, I kind of strip it down to the bare components. Essentially, down to like it would take me an hour to rebuild once I could get there. And then I'll take that time in the hotel the night before the competition, I'll just rebuild the whole robot okay. at the event, which can be a little nerve wracking, especially sometimes you like pack things down and then you get to the event and you're like, oh no, I'm missing like this connector. I'm going to have to make that tomorrow morning out of spare parts that I've brought. But if you're meticulous in how you like pack down and then rebuild out of pack, it's pretty, pretty okay. So I'll give you the complete opposite answer. <laughs> All right. I actually, uh, for Motorama, I packed and shipped mine 100% battle ready without the um, battery. I actually just put a spacer in where the battery would go. Oh, okay. um, very minimal packaging. Okay. Um, and it was 100% battle ready, and I figured if it couldn't handle being shipped, it shouldn't be in the arena. Good point. Because I was great. I mean, you know, you'll see the recap as soon as this guy goes by. What was that? <laughs> uh, you'll see the recap, but I mean, I split one of the S7 impactors in half, and that was the kind of forces that we're seeing. So, mm. you know, dropping a bag, I hope I can handle that. Yeah. So yeah. I ship it battle ready because with everything in there, with all the padding and all the you know, stuff that I do on the inside, that is probably going to be the safest that everything's going to be. But if it's empty, then stuff can kind of bang around a little bit. Okay. So I actually pack it um, the exact same way it'd be right before the fight. So when I showed up at Motorama, I literally put in a charged battery and that was it. Pull off the box and boom. Yep. Awesome. So that's kind of how I do it. It's, it's a good test. I mean, if something breaks in shipping, you need to fix that before you Okay. Straight up. That is a good point. I mean, I, I pack mine down mostly so that I know that things aren't going to get hit the wrong way, essentially. Like, I... Is there a right way? Well, that's, that's true. <laughs> and combat robots, there's not going to be a right or wrong way to yeah. do it. I, it's more. I think for me, it's more about like because at the moment I'm still at the point of using cordless drill motors for my 30s, and I know that you can shatter those if you hit them the wrong way. Yeah. So, same with. Uh, I have these little air tanks in my Um I used to just keep them in the toolbox, but after all the bouncing around and yeah. stuff, they come out all dented. So uh, to just quickly improvise, I took a bunch of socks and then shoved it into the sock, <laughs> and then put another sock on that, and then another sock on that, and then folded it all over until I had this. Sock package and no dents. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't know. One of my design philosophies is making sure that something just doesn't have anywhere to move. Yeah. It can't go anywhere else, it just has to stay put. Yeah, so, yeah. We're, we're, yeah, whereas typically I'm kind of, I think this is my problem. I have to go the other way. I design for where all of my motors are going, and then I just design enough empty space that I can duct tape electronics in there, yeah. um, and I also then make sure I've got a point to zip tie my link to the book. It's one of the big things that I've found uh, is links in 30 pound robots have a tendency to pop if they are rigidly locked to the frame. You take a big hit and your link will just pop out. It doesn't, like you guys have my R2 switches that like a hand so you can just like easily build things, but in Australia, well, we don't have those, or they're ridiculously expensive. They're ridiculously expensive for everyone. Yeah, it's, it's like twenty dollars shipping. Uh, Waiachi, if you see this, <laughs> who are you using to ship? <laughs> yeah, it's like five bucks flat rate. Learn how to ship. Throwing <laughs> 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 shade Go, going, going in, going in. Um, Just saying, like yeah. now, it's what twenty eighteen now. Yeah, it is. That is. 
going yeah. out there. Yeah. <laughs> check check the invisible watch. Yeah, yeah. that's two at a time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we, most people at home use power switches, and yeah, if they're rigidly locked to a frame, they can very easily pop, so I zip tie my links in place, which means that if the robot gets hit, the zip ties jiggle a little bit, and the link stays attached to where it's supposed to be. Okay. Yeah. You know, it depends on your design philosophy and whether you're going to go why aren't you, why aren't you switches or links or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> give them trip to shipping but recommend them highly so they the yeah. product's fine yeah their yeah. process isn't it? Really. just yeah. saying how it is yeah well that's yeah. it I mean a lot of people I've talked to who have built heavyweights swear by their switches so yeah. I, I have the I bought one and it's the same switch I've had for three competitions now and I mean, the whole robot has been replaced around that switch, and it's still the original switch. I've never rewired it or anything. Cool. Oh, well. So I mean, you know, for an eighty-dollar switch, it's extremely expensive, but I've never had an issue with it. If I lost one fight because of the link, I would have paid. Yeah, it yeah. That's the. That's the. I have definitely lost fights losing links. Oh, so. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. I'm gonna do it like paid eighty dollars retroactively to just win it. Ah, uh, maybe. I mean, it was, it was a sportsman fight, so I didn't really care that much. But yeah, it, it does. It does suck to lose because of like Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. I think uh, I think we can wrap up there. If you guys are happy, unless you guys want to talk about anything else. Yeah, all good. All right, well, uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it from here. We've got uh, a couple more fights we're going to go and watch, um, and then pack down for maybe see some of us have already got our robots home. I'll just have to get those robots home from here. Uh, so we've got a little bit of work ahead of us. So hope you guys have enjoyed that one, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Friendly. If we try hard enough, <laughs> uh, so I don't really know what we're going to talk about. Let's just kind of see how we probably go. robots, right? Yeah, probably robots. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a good start point. Yeah.